It's time to set aside the superficial. It's time to go deeper. It's time to engage in truth. Here's John Bornstein. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Engage in Truth. This is John Bornstein. I'm a senior pastor of Calvary Fellowship Fountain Valley right here in Colorado Springs. And I am thrilled that you are tuning in today because we have a very special guest in the studio who is going to help me in uh, capturing, really going through the details of a very serious subject, uh, one that I believe will be challenging for all of us. It, it needs to be. We really need to cover this particular topic of accountability. So with me here in the studio is Dominic Faust, and Dominic is with the James Dobson Family Institute. He's also a worship leader uh, here at Colorado Springs at Calvary Fellowship Fountain Valley, and uh, he, he serves in a number of other ministries as well. And so, uh, Dominic, it is just such a privilege to have you back here in the studio with me. It's a uh, pleasure to be here, John. Well, Thanks for having me. This was a topic I know is near and dear to your heart as well. In fact, mm-hmm. uh, you really approached me on this subject because really, given the headlines that we're reading right now, I think that it's imperative that we have this very difficult discussion, a convicting one. We, we need to be convicted about this because uh, it, it is easy to sort of just let these things slide by and just uh, assume that uh, we just continue with the status quo. We just need to challenge things a little bit here, make sure we're really above reproach as the church of Jesus Christ. This is his church. So recently Recently, there have been two individuals who have made headlines for different reasons, uh, Kanye West and John Christ. So let me just uh, set up uh, what's going on right now with Kanye West. And again, this is not a personal attack on the individual. Let me just set that up right now. It's just we're, ca- we're capturing what's going on in the headlines. And, and what are we, where are we to do with this? How do we take away from this? Mr. West says that he's a, a superstar, the most creative person on the earth, but that God has been working on him specifically through some of his friends. He had a, a bit of an issue uh, where he, recently he just shared that uh, even what he'd call breakdown, and, and, uh, and he's been convicted, as he says, uh, to, to change his ways. Uh, just one year ago, he was on Saturday Night Live making a number of waves uh, for his political stance, a hat that he wore, but specifically even from those of us who examine the content that he was putting out there. His musical performance was I Love It with Lil Pump. It's a song that mostly was edited on television due to its vulgar nature. In fact, it was so vulgar that it debuted at the Pornhub Awards, not even wow. one year ago. Uh, the album that was supposed to come out of this particular song was to materialize then in late uh, 2018. Uh, he went on Saturday Night Live, I believe it was in October, mm-hmm. and it was supposed to come out around November that year. The album never came out. It was delayed a number of times, and then in February of 2019, Kenny G began to record for an upcoming track of his and then mentioned that this particular sound would sound really good on a gospel album, And then just 10 days later, there's a video of him playing the piano, not Kenny G, but Kanye West, of him playing the piano for a group called Sunday Service. And he claims that he was saved then around April of this year. And other musicians have now said, like Nicki Minaj, saying that uh, he's now proclaiming to be a born-again Christian. Uh, And then this album that had been delayed a number of times materializes. This delayed album is then reannounced on August of this year, August 29, 2019, as Jesus is King. And it's released on October 25th of 2019, not long ago, to a lukewarm and mixed reception. However, the Christian market has gobbled it up, and West has become the first artist to monopolize all 10 spots on the Christian and gospel charts, driving total sales to number one on the U.S. Billboard 200, a much-needed rebound for Mr. Kanye West after a disappointing commercial sales from his previous album. So Kanye has just recently performed at Lakewood Church in Houston. That's what's making all the waves right now. It's the largest church in America with 43,000 weekly attendees and 13 million viewers, led by Joel Osteen. The seats were being sold online for a Sunday service at $250 each from scalpers. And this was on a Sunday, mind you, during which he called himself the greatest artist that God has ever created. Now, some skeptics question the authenticity of it all. Some reviewers have even suggested that his deadlines for contractual commitments were pressing, and the album was easy money from an easy audience suggesting that the album was rushed, not even quality work for gospel or Christian music genre. Many celebrities then tend to dabble in profiting from the Christian audience. We saw Nicolas Cage in Left Behind, or even Mel Gibson, who uh, directed a movie favorite, The Passion of the Christ, but they don't seem to be changed 
often by the content that they're producing. They, they quickly amass a following only to let down the followers later. So does this mean that we're questioning the authenticity of Kanye West's claims of Christianity? I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not going to go out there and say no. I'm, I'm not going to or, or say yes or no or on that. I'm not questioning whether or not he really gave himself to Jesus Christ. But he needs discipleship and a firm foundation in truth. And then the fruit would be evident of that. I know, Dom, mm-hmm. we were talking about this a great deal. What, what are some of your thoughts on this? Um, well, I agree with you. Um, if, if this is all genuine and um, he is a born-again Christian, then I think he does need um, that group of people to have a strong foundation in their uh, faith yeah. to kind of build him up um, and just, you know, like instill— mentor. Yeah, mentor, yeah. you know, get a, a spiritual mentor and just— you know, just keep diving into the word and making sure whatever you're saying, because let's let's just say he has tremendous influence. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he needs to make sure whatever he's saying is biblically true and that he's not leading others astray. That's right. From That's that. right. I mean, and he was so, quickly given a very big platform mm-hmm. with this recent conversion. If mm-hmm. indeed this is authentic, and we mm-hmm. pray it is, I, I don't want to be a oh, naysayer yeah. to that. I, we love when people come to know mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. We know that it's, you know, the angels are celebrating. If indeed this is mm-hmm. real, uh, you know, he, he would be a baby Christian at best. So he, yeah. he needs some mentoring, needs some discipleship. I think some of the words he's even used recently there at Lakewood, the, the way he structured yeah. his sentences, uh, yeah. kind of the old Kanye coming out a little bit there. Yeah. Um, and, and so we don't want to be negative to mm-hmm. that, but I, I, I'm a little concerned mm-hmm. when Christians sort of gobble up the celebrity platform and say, oh, this celebrity, let's just throw him on stage, sell the seats, and and, and just trust that it's all going to be yeah. Holy Spirit led. There's not going to be any error or mistake, and, and just give mm-hmm. him the biggest platform. Uh, mm-hmm. Really, I mean, this is the largest church in America. Yeah. Some may question, you know, Joel Osteen's perspective or use of the gospel at mm-hmm. times and whether he's speaking truth at all times. Yeah. However, it is a large Christian audience audience or those who are seeking truth and knowledge and understanding of Jesus Christ. So mm-hmm. on a Sunday, mind you, for yeah. him to be given that platform, that's a pretty big deal for a baby mm-hmm. Christian. Yeah, and I remember uh, looking on uh, YouTube for the video, because I, I wanted to hear his message. I wanted to see what he had to say, and um, from the high-end production from the Lakewood Church, uh, it was like a three-hour-long video, mm-hmm. and you know, as I was watching it, you know, an hour in— you know, it's still the Sunday service choir um, playing, which right. they're amazing. Like, it just sounds so good. Um, then, you know, after a while, I was like, okay, let me scrub to the part where he's going to come up and start talking. And for that whole three hours, there was nothing. It was just mm. the the Sunday service choir. And uh, and so I was like, well, you know, I want to I hear what he has to say, you know. And, um, you know, going through the suggestions on the, on the list for YouTube, um, there was like, you know, three-minute clip clip here, four minute clip there. And it was just like sections of his, um, Mm. of his testimony or what he spoke about. And, um, and ironically, I was able to find the entire, uh, thing through someone's recording on their iPhone at the Mm. event. So even though, you know, Joel was seen in his production company or, you know, from the church, they're, you know, putting out this three hour long video of, of the music and all this stuff. It's high in quality, but then yet they don't make it known to the public or release to the public the actual high in quality of of the entire interview or right, his um, testimony. And his so testimony yeah. in full. And you know, and you, you have to, you know, get it through, you know, second hand, you know, content maker. Um right. and so um yeah, I mean I was grateful to to see it and uh and what were your thoughts? Um I mean, I didn't think he said anything like biblically inaccurate. Like, I just, I feel like he was just kind of touching the surface. Like, he didn't really sure. go too much in detail about how he got saved. Um, you know, he just, his, yeah. it, I don't know. Yeah, still, still young. He's still young. Yeah. And if indeed this is a, you know, and I know that Dr. Dobson went out on a limb and he really told the general public, mm-hmm. hey, Donald Trump is a, is a baby Christian here. He's recently yeah. given his life to the Lord. And so all of that, the negativity that followed him up to election, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that there was a lot of people on the fence mm-hmm. about that. You know, you know, here's a guy who owned casinos, you know, Miss yeah. Universe contests, all these <laughs> sort of things. And, you know, yeah. it seemed to be, you know, anything but a Christian. And so yeah. here Dr. Dobson was putting himself 
himself out there and saying, he, he's recently given his life to the Lord. Let's give him a chance. Yeah. Let's watch God work. I, I know we want to do the yeah. same thing with Kanye West, but I oh, think yeah. there's a difference of saying, let's put a baby Christian out and, yeah. and with his influence, just assume that it's just going to be, yeah. you know, he's influencing a lot of people right now. So mm-hmm. I think discipleship is key, not only for him, but for all of us and, mm-hmm. and the seriousness. I mean, we are told the seriousness of those who are teaching or speaking mm-hmm. Uh, and, and on a platform like that, especially, uh, we want to get to that because there's mm-hmm. a lot of scriptural support for why we need to be in, in having discernment and, and Holy Spirit discretion in this. Yeah, I just wanted to say one thing. Um, you know, we're not just saying Kanye West, you know, like he needs to be, you know, have that accountability group and all that. You know, we're talking about anyone that's in the authority to have that, like, you know, your your pastor, your That's right. um, other, you know, spiritual leaders, you know, that are appointed in those positions, like, they have to have that sense of accountability That's to right. make sure they're on the right path. Yeah, I think that's just good discernment for Christendom mm-hmm. in, in its entirety. As scriptures speak to that great deal. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the other headline maker just for a moment, uh, John Christ. Comedian John Christ, he's an avowed Christian with nearly 2 million followers on his social media channels, and he just recently canceled his tour, had his Netflix special put on hold, and his upcoming book postponed because he was accused of sexual abuse by several women, and he admitted even to sexual sin and addiction struggles and promised to work on getting his life spiritually healthy. Uh, Paul Coles with the Christian Men's Network stated that John Chris is a man claiming to follow Jesus, but living in a world of blurred lines. His intake of sexual toxicity is indicative of what's happening to millions of men in an atmosphere of our culture today. And he says, I will pray for his recovery. He then goes on to say, how can our society respect and elevate women as Jesus did if men won't adopt a different response to our culture? Men must take responsibility for change. We need a new generation of men who stand for truth and love. It's, it's men who follow the example of Christ, men of God, who are to be women's best encouragers, strongest advocates, and willing to do whatever it takes to elevate a woman's dignity and highlight her position as a joint heir, exactly as she was created to be. So again, as we're talking about two headline makers and really the subject of accountability really seems to permeate in both spheres here. I mean, we're talking about men who are men. They're, they are capable of failing. They're capable of mistakes. And certainly we see a number of Christian pastors that have fallen spectacularly. And 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 I don't want to be one of those ones where we just simply highlight their fall. We want to be encouragers of walking truth and, and being, uh, you, know, uh, you know, reestablished and restored and renewed to be able to do the great work that God has called mm-hmm. them to do. But in and through all of this seems to be a lack of accountability. Yeah. And, you know, I, I believe that, you know, God's in the restoring business. Yeah. Um, so, you know, regardless, you know, these you know, falls and, and, uh, yeah. And things like that, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's easy to kind of beat yourself up over it and, you know, to let the enemy just kind of just, you know, just keep pounding you down thinking that you're not good enough. You're never going to be good enough. You know, how can God use you, use you because, you know, you're, you're struggling with this particular sin, um, and whatnot. You're afraid of what other people may think of you, especially as a, Mm. you know, high end, you know, a spiritual leader, you know, at a church, like if you're the pastor or the worship leader, you know, you, you kind of worry about what people may think of you because, you know, it's tough, you know, yeah. and it's tough to walk a straight and narrow. To, exactly. And really, a lot of temptation out there. Exactly. And it feels like people are waiting for you to fall rather than encouraging you to stand. Yes. Right. And, I, and we need that. We need Aaron and hers to our right and left mm-hmm. constantly lifting our arms up to encourage praying over mm-hmm. us not taking that for granted. We need prayer covering constantly yes. is individuals, you know, James tells us that we not, we're not to take this lightly. The teachers are mm-hmm. held to a higher standard. I think we, yeah. we do take that a little lightly. We, you know, high end production can certainly uh, dr- d- create some disillusionment to mm-hmm. the seriousness of this particular role. So mm-hmm. we need encouragers out there big time. And we certainly yeah. want to be that here on the radio show. We, John Chris yeah. is a man and we believe many talents needs to be encouraged, needs yeah. to be prayed for. May God restore him and, and put those talents back to use. And may Kanye, of course, yeah. uh, grow in knowledge and understanding of the Lord and, and deepen his walk. May it not be a publicity stunt or any type yeah. of media ploy to sell an album. I pray it's truly authentic and uh, and that he walks faithfully with Almighty God yeah. and then encourage 
others in secular media and the music business certainly needs to have more Mm -hmm. faithful believers in it too. So, you know, we definitely want to highlight that encouragement, but as far as a standpoint of accountability, I think we can all learn something from this. We need accountability, bottom line, really, as men, as, as women, Especially as men, I mean, oh, honestly, yeah. there's temptation at every corner, right? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, you're going in a checkout line. You're going to see it on the magazines. Yeah. You're going to see it in every commercial. Uh, we were just talking about this last week on the radio show that you know, even uh, cheerleaders on an NFL program, everything. Mm-hmm. There's it, Satan is very clever in how he positions temptation at every moment uh, through media, especially. I mean, yeah. it, every media, digital channel audio, mm-hmm. whatever it is, there's temptation. We need accountability. Oh yeah, there's temptation everywhere. You know, like you're saying with the media. Or, you know, like just going online, like an ad can pop up out of nowhere. You could be Mm -hmm. on a, you know, perfectly safe site. And then all of a sudden, boom, there's something that pops up, you know, an ad that might tempt you. Yeah. And so it's, it's definitely um, very important to have, you know, accountability, you know, those barriers set up um, to help uh, you for success. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, you came to me with this subject of accountability. I know some things mm-hmm. were on your heart. What What are some points that we can take away from all this that really, you know, and just a, I, our time's going to get away from us. I know it will. Yeah. we love talking about <laughs> this, but as we talk about accountability, what are some really takeaways as we, we know we need it. How do we do this? I mean, how do we have good, healthy, God honoring accountability in our lives? Well, one thing I want to um, say is that, you know, no one is, you know, going to get special treatment from it. They're not going to be excluded from it. And you know, at some point, we all are going to be held accountable to God. That's right. And uh, 2 Corinthians 5.10, it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due for us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Also in Philippians 2.9-11, through 11, it says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above all names, that is the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Well, let me just throw in another point Mm -hmm. there. I think that we as Christians are called to grow more spiritually. We need to do that. This is not something that we're just take lightly. We need to press toward that goal. We need to push to be more like Christ's image. And you cited Philippians. Let me do the same thing. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 to 14. We read that, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So, yeah, so what I want to do is I want to talk about the different types of accountability. Um, Now, I just want to let you know I did take this um, from a good friend of mine, Dr. Tim Clinton, and uh, him and Arthur Jesse Dillinger uh, came out with the a Bible. It's called the Care and Counsel Bible, mm. um, which is a great Bible um, that talks about various topics. It gives you scriptures to meditate on and yeah. just some background, like as as if you were seeing a counselor, mm. per se. Okay. So the first one we have is restorative accountability. And I'm going to just go through these real quick, and then I'll explain what each one is. Okay. Uh, second one is preventative accountability. Third is constructive accountability. And lastly, task-oriented accountability. Mm. So first one, restorative accountability. It is a form of accountability that can restore relationships. For example, with, between your friends, your family, spouses, you know, church members. You mm-hmm. know, We all have that one person at church that might get under our skin. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, to have this kind of accountability, there has to be an agreement between the offender and the person that was offended and that there also is a genuine repentance from from that person. Right after that, there has to be a sense of forgiveness from the person that was offended. And in Scripture, it says in 2 Corinthians 2, 7, Now instead you ought to forgive and comfort him so that he will not be overwhelmed with excessive sorrow. Mm, Amen. Second uh, accountability is preventative accountability, and that is a form that places safeguards in areas where a believer may be weakened. So like with John Christ and his, you know, weakness with, you know, flirting with other women and the lust and the pornography and and whatnot. Um, This would be a good accountability structure for him to put in place. Um, With scripture in Mark 14, 38, it says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And in James 5, 16, 
Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Amen. So the, pr- the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Indeed. Indeed. And, and uh, moving along, constructive accountability. And now this is a form of accountability that encourages believers in their spiritual walk. So this would be something like Kanye West who might be able to, you know, implement and implement into his life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just having that, that group of guys, a uh, mentors that can help build you, encourage you to be, a uh, a better man uh, for God. In Hebrew ten twenty three, it says, "Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful." Yeah. And lastly, uh, the task oriented accountability. It's a form of accountability that concentrates on making sure the person is held accountable with their actions. So, for example, you know, making sure that they. Um, fulfill all their commitments, um, that they're meeting their goals, they're, you know, not falling behind, not over-promising and under-delivering right. kind of mm-hmm. thing. And, and you know, when you do that, that brings frustration, and then people may not, you know, trust that you say what you're going to do. That's right. You're not going to do it. So Yeah, and I, I know yeah. that there's some things that can ha- hinder all of this. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, we, we're really good about excuses. You mentioned that earlier. I, things like denial. You know, Second Samuel chapter twelve, one to seven comes to mind, where, where Nathan is confronting King David, uh, mm-hmm. and then you have to come to the the terms of this, of this reality that, that you are that man. You know, you can no longer deny the facts or lies. You know, Colossians three nine to ten talks about not do not lie to each other, since you have uh, mm-hmm. taken off your old self and all of its old practices and put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge and the image of its creator. Yeah. Uh, or even blame. You know, we play the blame game; it's somebody else's fault all the time that could certainly hinder accountability genesis 3 11 to 13 talks about that where you know we see what happened in the garden of eden where you know it suddenly yeah. it's passed the blame to the the neg- <laughs> pass it all the way down to the serpent it's the serpent's yeah. fault right so how about pride pride could certainly be a hindrance romans chapter 12 verse 16 of living in harmony with one another, one another do not be proud but be willing to associate with people in low position do not be conceited i think that pride yeah. can certainly hinder it's everybody else's problem but mine mm-hmm. you know i don't have an issue with accountability you do we've got the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know. exactly. Mm-hmm. So, you know, one thing is we got to take note is no accountability can take place um, if there is no relationship, um, accountability relationship. Right. Um, that tolerates the continued sin um, right. from the offender. So... Yeah, just turn a blind eye, deaf ear. Yeah, 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 exactly. Pretend like it's not happening. You see your buddy mm -hmm. making the mistakes, turn the pornography, not say anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that and, you know, if the person that's getting the accountability is not owning up to their actions and is actually Mm. skewing, like, oh, no, this week was really good. I didn't didn't struggle with this, even though deep down you know you did. Um, Right. You know, there's no no, um, room to grow and to, you know, get better. Um, in Matthew five twenty nine through 30, it says, If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Mm-hmm. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go to hell. Mm-hmm. And I know these are uh, very convicting. Uh, these are convicting scriptures, convicting thoughts. We all need to be held accountable, especially as representatives of Jesus Christ. Every one of us, if we claim that we are followers of Christ, then we're ambassadors of Christ. We're light bearers in a dark world. We we need to be held to a higher standard in that and, and constantly pushing through, running the race as to win the prize, buffeting ourselves daily to conform to the image of Christ. I mean, Paul talks about all of these things, especially in Romans chapter 7, is he mm-hmm. six all the way to 8, in fact. He, he talks about the struggle in the flesh and the victory that we're supposed to have over the lusts of the flesh, the ways of the world, and, and how this is a daily thing where he even says, who will save me from this body of death? I mean, this is a daily thing where he even describes like a boxer, of you're boxing your body, knowing that what it desires and craves is going to be in opposition to mm-hmm. what the Holy Spirit desires for us. So rather than denying that, that. We accept that reality that we are in a spiritual battle, even with ourselves, 
and the temptation is real. We all need accountability. We all need a prayer covering. And I think that at the end of this, what we could take away is that discipleship is something greatly lacking even in the church today. It is so easy to go in with almost the, the sheep mind ta- mentality. They go mm-hmm. in, they sit down, warm up you, listen to message, sing a few songs, get out of there and go back yeah. to the rest of their week as opposed to we, we need to go deeper in the word together. We need brothers and sisters that hold each other accountable. The, the discipleship or the word disciple in the New Testament is mathetes, which, which means more than a student or learner. It's a follower. It's someone who adheres completely to the teachings of Christ, to the teachings of another, making all of these teachings rule over their life and their conduct. And we see that Christ talks about this a great deal, especially in Luke 14, 33, that if any, if any of you who does not give up everything cannot be my disciple, Mark, Matthew 16, 24 then says, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And we know that this is hard teaching from John chapter 6, where many even left him. They, they couldn't take what he was telling them of he being the only way, the bread of life that they needed to consume of him and him alone. So biblically speaking, a Christian is a disciple of Christ. And a Christian is someone who has placed their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They're born again by the power of the Holy Spirit. They belong to Christ, and they're daily being transformed into his likeness of 2 Chronicles chapter 3, 18. So all of this is something we shouldn't take lightly. Discipleship is key. We must adhere to the teachings of Jesus Christ, hold each other accountable. And Matthew 7, 15 to 20 that tells us that we'll know them by their fruit. And indeed, we know that this is not something that happens over overnight. Like with Kanye West, this might take a little while, but let's be cautious and just throwing him out on a platform and then the next platform and so forth because of his celebrity status in the world mm-hmm. of men. Even the Apostle Paul needed three years of discipleship, yeah. even though he grew up in a Pharisee home. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees, right? And yet he still needed three years just like the disciples. So we know that in 2 Timothy chapter 4, 1 to 5, the reason for all of this, especially from the platform is that we know that in the end of days especially, people will be drawn to what tickles their ear. They will flee from sound doctrine. They will heap up for themselves teachers, and they'll turn their ears away from truth and be turned aside to fables. This is really indicative of a culture that loves to hear a good thing, and that was indicative of the Greek Mm -hmm. culture as well. So we have to be mindful of this, hold each other accountable, all teachers of God's Word, musicians alike, Anyone who takes a platform, which is, which is all of us, every yeah. one of us have a platform, whether it's in our work, our home, all of our spheres of influence, that is a platform for Jesus Christ. We all need accountability. So Dominic, thank you for yes. being on Engage in Truth. Thank you for challenging yep. us with this study today. Well, thank you. And I, I know that those of you who are listening today, I hope you're encouraged. Please go back where you listen to this, share this with your friends and family, get the word out, be convicted, and let's challenge others in this as well and be informed on these issues. To learn more about our ministry, go to Calvary. CalvaryFountain.com. This is a ministry of Calvary Fellowship Fountain Valley, where services take place at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. on Sundays, but there are activities throughout the week to help you go deeper into God's Word. God bless you, my friends. Take care.